Hello and welcome back to BlockWhoMinistries.com. I'm your host, Minister Love, and I am joined here today with my one-on-one student, Sister Phyllis, where we are Bible lovers, achieving Christ's knowledge, understanding, and wisdom, our weekly Bible study ministry. Sister Phyllis, how are you doing on this new week as we go into lesson number two today? How are you doing? I am well excited to be here today. So, <laughs> hey, thank you. <laughs> amen. Amen. Well, we're excited to have you as well, Sister Phyllis. You've been with us for many, uh, many years, and it's just great to have another Bible lover to explore this new series we're doing this year where we're talking about usual or unusual couples in our Bible. That's going to be the premise today. And we're going to be looking at episode number two, good and evil. Ooh, Phyllis is going to be a good one, isn't it? Yes, it is. It yes. certainly is. Well, audience, we are praying uh, uh, that you are following along with us. Go get your Bible. Sister Phyllis is going to open us up in prayer shortly. So go get your Bible and follow along with us as we discover this unusual couple called good and evil. So with that being said, we're going to have Sister Phyllis to go ahead and open us up in prayer, please, would you? Yes. Okay. Father God in heaven, Lord, we praise you. We magnify your holy name, Lord. We are just so grateful for life today, Lord, and all that you have done and all that you are doing. Lord, we um, just prepare our hearts and our minds to receive your word, and we just ask that you will open the eyes of our understanding, Lord, so that we can better know what it is that you would have for us in this uh, study today. Lord, we ask that you bless every listener, Father. We ask that you uh, touch all of our hearts and our minds, Lord, and just give us a thirst and a hunger for your word, Lord, that we might know you even the more, Father. And as we are facing these times of good and evil, and it's so mm -hmm. apparent today, Lord, we just ask that you will allow us to continue to follow you and choose you, Lord, and to uh, turn from evil. So we thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, we invite you to teach us your word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And that's how you open up in prayer. <laughs> Amen. I love it. Because, you you know, first, first thing you said, we are what? Grateful. And we got to be grateful, especially, like you said, in the prayer, we're living in some what? Good and evil times. So whatever the situation is, we need to be grateful. And I love what you said too, Sister Phyllis, in your prayer, because you know, God listens to prayer and he does answer those that are according to his will. And what you said there was that we have a what? Thirst and a hunger. See, if you want to be, if you want to be in a relationship with God, if you want to be coupled with God, you're going to have to have a thirst and a hunger for his, what? Righteousness. In other words, his goodness. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, God bless you, darling, for that beautiful prayer. Well, okay, then, Miss Phyllis, here we go as we begin this lesson number two in this brand new year. Now, take a look. Take a look at the images that we have today. We're talking about who? Good and evil. Oh, right then. So, Phyllis, let's let's um give the audience a backdrop of your understanding or your pers perspective of this couple we're going to be looking at today. Let's take a look at the first side of this couple. Good. And it's represented by this little angel. You know, when we see angels, we think, oh, good, good stuff. So what is good to you? How would you define this word good? Uh, I think good, like just having a good heart, you know, like where you intend to do what's right. You know, it's, it's equivalent to right and wrong, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so having good intentions, you know, uh, looking to not do harm mm -hmm. to others. You know? mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just sum it up with do the right thing. <laughs> like it, it's based on our morality, you know, to be right. Exactly. So now that you you you, uh, you gave us that side of good, I like how you describe that morality, doing what's right, just do the right thing, right? So can mm -hmm. you imagine that this couple, this good person that has morals, 
how in the world can they be attached to someone that's evil? So what is evil then? How did good get associated with evil? How would you describe evil? Evil is basically the opposite. You know, it's um when you are inclined to lie or cheat. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when you do intend to do somebody harm or mm-hmm. do something that you know you know is wrong, but you do it anyway. You know, that's kind of on the side of Mm-hmm. Uh, doing the wrong thing or not doing what's right, but then I think there's a there's a intensified level to it where you know it's evil when the intent is to be harmful. You yeah. know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that's good. That's good. Now look how you just described totally opposite of good. Everything that good is evil is the opposite. No morals. Your intention, I like how you said the intentions of you to do this evil, this 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 plan, this plot that you have planned. So if that's the case and you're looking at good and evil, would you say this is a usual couple or is this unusual? How would you, what side of the couple would this be on? Um, <laughs> that's a good, good question. I, I think unusual <laughs> in the sense that mm-hmm. you know god represents good yeah but i think the parallel of the two are necessary because you know of who god is and what we know to to have to have happened mm-hmm. that you know um where satan wanted to you know his pride and all that made him want to mm-hmm. be like god and want to have what god you know, is mm-hmm. so they brought the evil aspect of it. So I'm gonna say unusual, yeah. but then um, you know, we know the parallel here of what God is doing in these couples mm-hmm. that I, I I don't want to necessarily use the word necessary, but okay. I guess it's the the balance of it is, is mm-hmm. you know, good yeah. and evil basically coincides together exactly exactly wow sister phyllis i like your your synopsis Mm -hmm. so to speak on how you frame all of this because i like that because they are unusual it's it's not meant for good and evil to live together because if it was then god jesus don't need to come back no more He didn't need to die on the cross for our sins if evil and good is supposed to be a long, forever lasting couple. This couple Mm -hmm. destiny is meant for a divorce court. It's meant to go before the court, the judgment day of God. There's going to be a a divorce decree upon this couple. They need to be separated. But, you know, with the times that we're living in, now we're seeing that uh, they're still together. But the day is coming, they will be separated. You know, it kind of remind me of, uh, of uh, Jekyll and Hyde. You know, you can mm-hmm. be that person you, uh, because you can have good and evil in you. We all got good and evil in us. But the thing is, which one is the master? Which one are you are you are obeying? So with that being said, oh, my God, this is so good. Uh, audience, me and Sister Phyllis, if we get on a roll, my God, we get excited just to even talk about it. We ain't got to the scripture yet. So you can see where we're going with this premises on today. We're going to be looking at two things, Sister Phyllis. Who is the scripture talking about and what is this about the good and evil of this of this uh, uh, individual in the text? What what's good and what is evil and should they stay together? Should, uh, is the scripture telling us they should be together? So let's take a look and let's see how good and evil got its start. That's that's the important. Where did it come from? Where did this good and evil? How did they get together? So let's take a look at our very first scripture and we're going to go over to Genesis chapter two. And we're going to take a look at verse nine. Sister Phyllis, could you read that for us, please? Yeah. Okay. And out, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree 
of knowledge of good and evil. Mm. Mm -hmm. So the so the key so, words today, I'm, I'm sorry, Sister Phyllis, let me just say this. I forgot to mention this. I want to let the audience know. So the key words today, audience, as she's reading the scriptures, the key words is what? Good and evil. And what is it about this couple that we're going to discover in the text? Okay, Sister Phyllis, go ahead. So we know that um, God made every tree mm -hmm. pleasant to fight, right? He made mm -hmm. that grow out of the ground. So there's um, the trees that were good for the food. And then mm -hmm. the tree of life was also mm -hmm. in the midst of the garden. And then the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, we know the story, or we may all have heard the story of mm -hmm. you know Adam and Eve and eating from the tree that the Lord said not to eat from. Uh -huh. And once they did, they then had the knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. So they they looked upon themselves as something wrong mm -hmm. before they ate of that tree. Yeah. They were all, it was good. Everything was pleasant, it, you know, but once yep. they ate, then they had the knowledge that, wait a minute, it's something off about the fact that we are, are naked. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. so that opened the door right. to, to the other side of good. Mm -hmm. Girl, look at here. I, I I think I tell you every week, why don't you just switch with Minister Love? Because Phyllis, that is exactly what I saw in the decks. This is amazing, isn't it? Take a look at this. Take a look at the image that we have here. What is, does the angel have? Food. She got an angel food cake. What does the devil have? He got the devil food cake, right? So there's a choice, isn't it? So before these two got together, Adam and Eve, like you said, they were made in God's image. So they knew good. They knew good. But the enemy, the serpent, he knew what? Evil. And what did God say? Don't go eat from that tree. In other words, don't go over there talking to that serpent. See, this ain't a literal tree. This ain't a literal tree. You cannot go today to the store and to the uh, orchard and say, hey, I want to uh, buy a tree of knowledge of good and evil. They, it, it, it ain't no such thing. This is a spirit. This is a spirit of the serpent that's in, 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 in God's garden and he knows evil, but Adam and Eve knew good. But what happened? When God said, don't go over there, like you were saying, Phyllis, when they went in and partook of the conversation with the enemy, now they have joined their good with his evil. And now they're mixed together. Now, now you got the a knowledge of what? Good and evil. So not only does the serpent know about good and evil, but now Adam and Eve know about good and evil. That's why God planted the tree. See, that's why and sometimes when people's, uh, uh, people try to hook you up with someone in a relationship and they say, nah, that person ain't good for you. Don't go talking to that person. Don't go over there. Don't have no, nothing to do. That's a bad person. But see, if you ignore that and you go over there and talk to that person, you now are in a conversation with the evil. Now, your good is now uh, coupled with the evil. And now you are in a relationship. That's what mm. happened to Adam and Eve. They're now in a relationship with the enemy. And now good is mixed with evil. And that's why they got to have a divorce. That's not usual. That's unusual. God did not meant for good and evil to be in a relationship. That's why he tried to tell them, don't eat, don't go to the tree. But they did. And they had the tree of life there. That's all good. Ain't no evil there. They should have ate there first. Should have went over there and had a conversation with Jesus because he's the tree of life. See, even mm -hmm. the tree of life is not a literal tree. That's a, that's a, 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 a metaphor for Jesus. Just like the tree of knowledge of good and evil is a metaphor for the enemy. See the difference? Good mm -hmm. and evil. Mm -hmm. A couple. Yep. Yep. Woo! -hoo. Phyllis, any other thoughts you have on that? That was good, wasn't it? You brought it out. Yeah, I like how you tied in, you know, relationships where when people say, you know, that person not good for you, and you go talk to them anyway, and then that you get sucked in, you know, uh -huh. from that 
education and then you go back and you know next thing you know you're involved when you shouldn't have been you know <laughs> same with, with uh eve with satan yeah so yep there it is <laughs> there it is right there so we get to see how good and evil got their start we now see how they got together but we also gonna see how they gonna separate too. Amen. Let's take a Amen. look. Amen. Let's take a look at our second scripture, Sister Phyllis. And we're gonna take the audience now over to Isaiah chapter five. And we're gonna take a look at verse 20. Isaiah five, verse 20. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh -huh. woe, unto, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Ooh. <laughs> so we know Isaiah mm -hmm. is prophet. All right now. Mm -hmm. right? So this is the Lord speaking. And I look, I had a chance to look a little bit where okay. this Chapter five is talking about the the vineyard, you know, and uh -huh. it's talking about, you know, uh, basically. Bottom line is, God had placed, you know, I, I'm gonna say Israel, you know, yeah. in, in in this vineyard with protection, yep. uh -huh. and based that protection, you know, there was everything positive, and as long as you know people chose to do right then mm -hmm. it was it was good but mm -hmm. then because of the heart you know god at some point removed the protection and you know then they are were subject to their own devices you know mm -hmm. subject to what they're doing. it really equates to i thought about what we have going on right now today yeah but this particular scripture is saying that you know it's wrong to call evil good and good evil. You know mm -hmm. that's really a deceit. You know that's when you're right. trying to make something that is not, you mm -hmm. know, being, you're, you're being deceitful. And mm -hmm. so he's saying that that's a warning. Mm -hmm. Like not do that. If you put darkness for light and light for darkness, mm -hmm. you know, we aren't supposed to do that. You know, you're supposed to be righteous and represent in a way that's not trying to deceive others. Or, you uh -huh. know, and it's just, bottom line is lying too, you know. Yeah, like, that's right. That's right. Don't uh -huh. lie on somebody, you know, and make right. it as if something that is not, you know. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Wow, Sister Phyllis, you uh, look at here. I think you're playing a baseball game. You don't hit another home run. Okay. I love this. And I like how you was able to go back and share with us that uh, God sees Israel as a what? Vineyard. And he sees her as a vineyard. So he was protecting her just like he did with Adam and Eve, right? When he put them in the garden and told them what not to do. And so, mm -hmm. see, when you are under protection, God gave us all a free will. Many of us choose to get out of his protection. God is not going to uh, restrain you and hold you down with some handcuffs and make you stay. No, you got a free will. You can stay in the vineyard or you can leave the vineyard, stay in the garden or leave the garden. So what did they decide to do? You know how Israel was. They, uh, uh, they were always uh, uh, serving those pagan gods. That's why when they got hooked up with them pagan gods, they got so far gone into that mindset, like you said today, like what we're seeing today. They went so far down the rabbit hole that they now say evil is good and good is evil. In other words, they're saying that the pagan gods is good and the true God, Yahweh, is evil. And then mm. they, they got even more twisted that they start putting darkness for light. See how their mindset had went it affected their mind, it affected their heart, it affects your spirit, it affects your soul. If you get hooked up with the wrong couple, that 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 side of evil, this is what you're going to get. And notice the word that the prophet used, that God used through the prophet. He said, whoa, that's, that's a warning. Whoa to those that's calling evil good and good evil and darkness for light and bitter for sweet. And see, this, this darkness for light, they don't want the truth. 
See, the light mm -hmm. is the truth. The darkness, like you said, Sister Phyllis, that's the lies. That's the deceitfulness. And they love that because they don't think nobody can see them because they're in the dark. See, they done got so far gone into corruption. And then uh, look at perfect example today. We had a uh, in New York, they had this guy to run for Congress. And how did he get into Congress? Deceit. Lie. And lying. He lied even about his mama. He said his mama first died in nine at 9-11, then turned around and said she died in 2019, I think. What? Uh 20 uh, uh, really? See, there and 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 then and now you got some that's in that's behind him that supports him. They're saying when he they ain't calling it evil. They don't see nothing wrong with it. But there are some other people out of his district that he that he uh, campaigned for. They stood up and said, we ain't going for this evil report. This guy is bad. He is evil. And we and we don't even want him to represent us. But you got the other ones that's backing him higher than the local level. And they're saying what he did is good. They won't even come against it. What? Mm -hmm. Are you seeing this? Yeah. Yeah. We're living with Isaiah, not just prophesied back in 700 BC. Isaiah prophecy is coming alive right here in 2023. And by the time they get this video, it's going to be 2025. Okay. <laughs> Are you seeing this? Are you guys seeing this? Yeah. So, especially us Christians, we really got to be on guard because we're the ones out there with the banners talking about save Jesus. But on the other hand, you got hanging, hanging, hanging. Evil for right. good, good for evil. Which one are you going to be? You can't be both of them. Which one are you going to be, Jekyll or Hyde? Mm. Are you seeing this? Yeah. Woo Any other thoughts, Sister Phyllis, before we go to the next text? No. <laughs> All right, then. Hey, listen, where are we going now, Sister Phyllis? We are going to go to Psalm, mm -hmm. Psalm 37, 27. I got it. Love it. Psalm 37, 27. <laughs> this is good teaching. Thank you, Lord. All right. Okay. 37, 27. Mm -hmm. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I know how that makes you go, ooh. Right. <laughs> No, you know, this is our boy, David. Yes. Ooh. You know, it, and it just immediately make me, <laughs> made me think about um, uh, Psalm 23. You know, we should dwell in the house of the Lord forevermore. Mm -hmm. so here, David is, is saying, you know, depart from evil and do good. Mm -hmm. And more, dwell in the house of the Lord. Like, be on this good side with God. Mm -hmm. versus two people. Right. Exactly. So David is letting us know that this, this is an unusual couple. And he said, evil is so unusual, you need to what? Depart from it. Because if it was good, you would stay with it. He would encourage you to stay with it. No, stay with evil. No, David said depart. So there needs to be a what? Divorce. There needs to be a cutoff. There needs to be a separation of this unusual couple. What? Look what David says. He says, now, when you depart from that, and now, if anybody know about departing from evil, Phyllis, you know, David ought to know. Because David was full of evil. David had a man killed. He committed adultery. He even went over and, and, and fought with the Philistines. What? With the with the enemy. So David know a lot about evil, but even David being the king now, this just, I love this with God. God is no respecter of persons. If David, who is the head, the king of his people, of his kingdom, if he's doing evil, what do you think the people going to do? Evil. So, but if he departs from evil, now the his people, his subjects, they can look at the king and say, you know what? We need to change our ways. We need to depart from evil and let's start doing good. Let's start loving our neighbors. Let's start helping our people. Let's not rob them in the tithes. Oh, don't get me started there. Don't rob them in the tithes and the offerings. Okay. See, 
<laughs> Depart from evil and let's build up the temple. Let's build up the people and not just a physical temple, but we got to build up the spiritual temple of God's people. Wow. That's what we're looking at. So we want this couple to be divorced. David wanted it. Isaiah wanted it. The prophet told us, you know, uh, about the good and evil. So now, mm-hmm. so now we are seeing what happened here in the Old Testament. This couple has a long relationship. We're now going to go to the New Testament and see, are they still together? Are they still in this covenant or marriage relationship? Well, let's take a look. Let's go to Matthew. Chapter 12. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Matthew 12. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 12. Uh, 1235. You just got it. Audience, we pray that you call your friends, text your friends, and tell them to get in and watch this awesome lesson with Sister Phyllis and I today on the YouTube channel or the website, blackhoodministries.com. It is awesome. All right, my sister. Let's take a look. Matthew 12, verse 35. A good man out of good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. Mm -hmm. So we know who's talking here. This is Jesus. Yeah. Uh huh. (laughs) And so he is saying, you know, that. You know, when when you are good and think on good things, you mm-hmm. know, it, that's what's going to be in your heart. Mm-hmm. To bring forth is good things, whereas the opposite applies to evil. You know, people mm-hmm. that are evil, um, mm-hmm. they always going to be working up some evil scheme. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Out, of, out of the heart, the mouth speak, right? <laughs> oh, girl, you did it again. You did it again. <laughs> That's right, isn't it? So you see what Jesus is telling us? Even Jesus now, coming all the way down in the New Testament, we've been in the Old Testament, and now we're in the New, and Jesus is telling us about this couple. Even Jesus is showing us uh, here that this couple needs to be what? Separated. They, it's unusual because he's given us a picture of two different kind of men. He gives us one of a good man, and then he tells us about this one that's a evil man. So the thing is, which one have you chosen to be? Which one have you chosen when you give your life to Jesus Christ that you determined that you're going to be? Are you going to continue to be married to the evil? Or are you going to say, hey, look, I want a divorce. And so look what Jesus says, as you pointed out, Sister Phyllis. So with this good man, oh, I love this, because in his heart, he's going to store up treasure. What kind of treasure? Well, you sure can't put your Cadillac in there. You can't put your five-bedroom house in there. Come on now. Can't put your diamond rings in there. He ain't talking about them kind of treasures. He's talking about the word of God. He's talking about the scriptures. He's talking about what God's will is. That's a treasure. And when you store that up in your heart, what do you think is going to come out? Good things. Because you put the word of God in there. You know what this word says. You you heard it. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And if it's in your heart, it will come out of your mouth. Yes. Yeah. But then the other guy, the the evil man, out of his treasure. Now, he, don't, he got a treasure too now. He got a treasure of greed, power, money, uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, position. He has a narcissistic style of, of, of a treasure in his heart. He got maliciousness. He has violence. He has hatred. He has big bigotry. He has lying, stealing. He got all of that in his heart. And, and believe me, you know, you know that one because he's gonna open up his mouth on Twitter, Facebook, all the social media platforms. He's gonna come out there, he's gonna open up his big fat mouth, and he's gonna tell us everything that's in his what? Heart. heart. And he tells it with the emphasis, anger. Anger. Look at his face. Look at the enemy's face. He's full of anger and bitterness. He got he got so much treasure in his heart. He just, it, it goes out and he gives it to other people. He gives it to other ones that's going to follow him. You know, you can give gifts to other people because you want them to do what you do. Mm. Hey, 
I give you the I give you this position if you do this wicked plot with me. If you plot with me to tear down the government like we saw in Brazil, uh, uh, we saw in Brazil this year. Look what they tried to do to their government. Somebody plotted, somebody schemed. It wasn't a good man. It was the evil man. Why did they do that? Because they, that's what's in their heart. That's what they're treasuring up. Hatred. Bitterness. So mm. they could. So, ooh, ain't this good, fellas? Mm-hmm. Because it's the yeah. truth. And, you know, um, I just, I don't know where, what scripture it was, but uh, it talked about not giving gifts so yeah. that people mm-hmm. won't be in like you don't give yep. you don't give and they end up being influenced to do what you want them to do. Mm-hmm. Now that, that, I just read it this week. I'm like that <laughs> was, but yeah, so definitely mm-hmm. good point. Isn't it? Isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. Because it corrupts you. It will corrupt you. That's why a good man, he wants to stay away uh from the evil man cuz he know he's going to get corrupted. Woo wee, Phyllis. We got one. I think yeah, we got another scripture. Oh, let's go over now to Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter six, everyone, and we're gonna take a look at verse eight. We truly are Bible lovers achieving Christ's knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. I love to hear those pages turn, Sister Phyllis. I love it. <laughs> All right, so six and eight, Second Corinthians, by mm-hmm. honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, mm-hmm. as deceivers and yet true. Mm. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Who wrote so this? Paul definitely mm-hmm. wrote, and it's to the um, Corinth to the. Mm-hmm. And as the seers and yet true, I'm gonna um, let you break that one down for me. Oh, okay. You know what? What I wanted, what I want you to see that really stood out that Paul is talking to the church about. Remember, the key word is what? Good and mm-hmm. evil. And what did Paul say in this letter to the church? He's talking about reports. Mm-hmm. He said reports. That's your, in other words, your reputation. So Mm. Paul is saying, okay, church, he says, there's a difference. There's two kinds of people that's dealing with here. We got, we got people that has what honor. Mm -hmm. That's that good man. That's that good man. Then we got those that are, have a a report of what being dishonest. Well, we know that's the evil man, right? So then if you are of dishonor and you're going to have what kind of report? A evil report. But if you got honor, you're going to have a good report. And your report is going to be what? True. But if you are dishonest, you're going to have an evil report because your report is based on lies and deceit. Kind of like what we're seeing today with what happened in America. They did a, in, uh, a, a committee investigation on January 6th. And when it, after they did all of the investigation, they had to come up with a what? Report. A report. Mm-hmm. And everyone who has access could read that report. Now, when you read that report, you're going to come away with two things. It's either good, telling the truth, telling the truth, or, mm-hmm. or it's going to be evil where they covered up stuff and didn't tell the truth. They deceived the people with the report. What? Which one is it? So you're going to know because facts don't lie. Facts don't lie. That's your reputation, your honor, your, 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 uh, uh, your truthfulness that that's coming out of that treasure. Remember we talked about Jesus talked about the treasure. Well, so that's coming out of your treasure of your heart, honesty and a good report and the truth. That's a, that's a treasure of a good heart. But Paul gives the other side too, doesn't he? So again, even Paul is letting us know there must be a separation. This couple is unusual. They they don't belong together. They need to be divorced because it's toxic. 
You've heard of a toxic relationship. That's what mm -hmm. evil does to good people. It is toxic. It will kill you. Whoa. Hey, was, quick question. On mm -hmm. the, the part of that scripture says, um, as deceivers and yet truth. Mm-hmm. So, so the this oh. report and good report as deceivers and yet true. Mm -hmm. So the deceivers, he's talking about them of being on the evil report, the dishonored one. But the, mm -hmm. and the true is for those that's on the good report and got the honor. So he's letting them know you got some deceivers and you got some that are yet true. So you got these two groups of people here and you can see okay. the parallel. There's a parallel. Honor. OK. Good report. And that's true. That's true. But dishonor, a evil report, you are a deceiver. That, that group goes together. Okay, got it. Because I was uh -huh. thinking as deceivers and yet true, meaning that the people with the deceit, they believe that to be true, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, yeah. What is that saying? You can repeat a lie over and over. And you say it so many times. They now believe it's what? True. True. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Just like, like we happened in America and what happened in Brazil. Mm -hmm. They believed it. They were deceived. And now they're seeing the deceiver himself. Yeah, okay. Man. And Satan and, and Satan, the enemy, he comes in all fashions, all races, all nations. He ain't just reserved to one country. He's all over the globe, spreading his deceitfulness, spreading his lies, uh, giving people his what? Evil report. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look, Sister Phyllis. I think we have another scripture here. Let's go over yep. that last one. First Peter, first Peter chapter three. And we're going to take a look at verse 10. Yeah. So this definitely sums it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the day of the <laughs> Lord will come as a thief in the night. In the, in the which. Wait, 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 Phyllis. Are you at first Peter three ten? No, no, I'm not. Okay. okay. That, that was it, a good one though. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> oh Lord, I'm in second Peter. Okay. But that's a good one. We need to it's look at that. It's your word. It's your he For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Mm-hmm. Mm Wow. Uh -huh. um, yeah. So basically, um, we know this is Peter. Um, uh -huh. is basically that, you know, those that love life um, and see good days ref refrain the tongue from evil. So uh -huh. to, to, as, we, as we've been talking about, uh -huh. and let the lips speak no guile. So uh -huh. Yeah, disassociate uh, with evil. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. I like that. That's it. So that so this this is now this is now confirming to us that this couple don't belong together. They don't. Right. They're unusual. It, 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 it's it's never gonna work out. Never. I don't care how long they stay married. It's never going to work out. And I love this, like you were saying here with Peter. Now we got Peter now. We just saw Paul. We just saw Jesus. We saw Isaiah. We even saw God. Now we're seeing Peter. And he's still talking about good and evil. And Peter is saying, okay, there's another separation. You, you gonna, if you're good, you're going to love this life. You're going to love it in spite of everything that goes on. You're going to love it because you're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. You're preaching about salvation to people. So if you love what you do, you're going to see what? Good days. You're going to see mm -hmm. some good days. And when you do that, 
See, you used to be evil. You used to be a deceiver. But see, now that you are loving life now and you're not loving the power, the prestige or the money that comes in this life, you're now loving the true life of helping others. He says you no longer is going to be speaking evil or guile. You no longer doing deceit no more. He said, because now that you, you're loving life, you, what are you going to do? You're going to put your hand over your mouth. Say, nah, I ain't doing that. I ain't saying that. Uh, let yep. me reframe my tongue. Let me, let, ah, don't let me say that. This is a perfect example. The uh, When they was uh, electing the Speaker of the House here in America in Congress, and there was this guy, uh, uh, he was just being op in opposition. Every vote, he he would vote somebody else and he'd say no, right? So he must have made one of his colleagues really mad, right? And they showed it on the camera. And girl, that guy came over. He was so mad at this one guy. He was furious. Girl, he was, he pointed his finger at him like this. He pointed, and and, and uh, another guy came up behind him and he did this. He he grabbed the guy by the shoulder, didn't put his hand over his mouth. Like, don't say it. Don't say right. it. Don't say it. Girl, I was cracking up. See? Right. He mm -hmm. was ready. He, he, he was like, I'm going to let this joker have it. I'm go I ain't refraining my tongue. I'm going to let him have it. See, he was about to speak evil. He, he's going to let him have it. <laughs> but, yeah. So you remember that one? Did you ever see that? Yep. Saw it. Yep. <laughs> oh, so, so what about us today? Look at some of these leaders today. Look at some church folks and politicians together. Girl, they, they out in the open now. They done came out the closet, so to speak. And they don't care who hears them or what they say and how they say it because they're going to say what they want to say. And they don't care if you like it or not because they're wicked, they're malicious, and they want to get their agenda through. So, and, and how they do it is through violence. How they do it is through fear. How they do it is through deceit. Wow. So we got a love life. So we can see some good days and don't imitate the wicked one. Don't imitate the one that's bringing out of evil report out of his evil heart. Woo Sister Phyllis, we're going to stop right there. And we're going to ask you to share with us. What did you learn on this lesson today? Episode number two on this unusual couple called good and evil. <laughs> um, you know, the two main things. Well, one, let me just say that. Uh, uh -huh. unequ unequally yoked. That's yeah. what good. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I love it. Say that. Yeah. You know where that scripture where it talked about. I think it was Isaiah five and twenty. Mm -hmm. Um, talking about seeing uh evil for good. Yeah. You know the, that being a mindset where you could actually believe that mm -hmm. you know what you are, are doing is actually good mm -hmm. when it's not. So that, that was one point I, I highlighted. The other thing I highlighted is that from the standpoint of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, mm -hmm. that, that spiritual and metaphorically mm -hmm. rather than literally, you know, and the fact that the engagement with mm -hmm. was, is it was the conversation. It wasn't the, actual partaking of eating the fruit but that's eating right. the fruit was the entertainment of the uh -huh. idea right. and so often that level of temptation that's how it starts is that mm -hmm. the, the thought the idea and then next thing you know you know you you in there so uh -huh. yeah, those were the the couple of things that i highlighted so wow. awesome work yes. it really was Needing a, a divorce completely from. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad you brought up. I'm, I'm glad you brought up une unequally yoked because another student brought that one up too. So good point. That was a good point. So, so again, this is a couple. No, you don't want to be married to this. You don't want to be married to evil if you now call yourself a child of God and you repented and accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and say that what in the world do you want to go back to the evil man for? Why do you want to uh, uh, partake of that knowledge, that information? And see, that's what knowledge is. It's information. And now this information is all over the globe. All you got to do is click a button 
and you are at the tree of knowledge. All kind of conversations is going on. All kind of wicked plots is going on. What? And if you're yeah. not careful, what they call it, uh, 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 what they call it, you've been catfish. Catfish. Mm. People out there catfish. Yep. <laughs> oh, boy. Woo-hoo. Sister Phyllis, God bless you. Thank you so much for joining uh, with me and the audience today on this lesson today. It was powerful. It was really good. And we pray that everyone will be back with us next week on another great lesson that we're going to be talking about. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and we are going to close out in prayer. Amen. Dear Heavenly Amen. Father, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Ghost, Lord, we thank you for the spiritual classroom teaching today, Sister Phyllis and I, and the audience as well. We thank you, Lord, that we gave, uh, we filed our divorce papers today on this couple, good and evil. We don't want to ever... Uh, bring back this marriage again. So we thank you for the insight from the prophet Isaiah, from Jesus, our savior, Peter and Paul, all of them is showing us of the difference between good and evil. Which one are we going to be? So thank you for opening up our eyes and ears as Sister Phyllis had prayed for in the opening prayer. And you certainly did that. We love you. We praise you. And we ask for blessings upon our uh, ministry work, praying for blessings upon those that are out there sharing the gospel and want to have a good report. So we thank you and we love you until this time next week. In Jesus precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you, uh, Minister Love. What a good oh, way to study the word, I tell it, you. Isn't it the best way? You know, I, I just thank you all uh, so much for being a part of this ministry because uh, uh, we wouldn't be here if we wouldn't have people that love the word, Bible lovers. You got to be a lover of the Bible to get this kind of uh, teaching. Amen. 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 All right, then, everyone. So God bless you, Sister Phyllis. Love you. And we'll see you this time next week. Take care and goodbye. Love Thank you. Bye -bye. All right. Bye-bye.